If you missed out on the final question period prior to the summer recess, you missed out on a few fireworks. I'm not going to cover everything that went on in the House of Commons yesterday, but we are going to take a look at the fatal uppercut Pierre Polyev saved for the very last question of the session. I'll be honest, I was starting to lose faith because news that the Liberals blew through $220,000 worth of airplane food on one trip is bad enough on its own. But it also happened to come out on the same day as a report that revealed 25% of Canadians are living in poverty. Let me repeat, an entire quarter of our country's population is living in poverty. Mathematically speaking, you and everyone else watching this video know someone who is on the cusp of financial disaster. So you can bet I was expecting the Conservatives to bring this up during question period, and just when it looked like it wasn't going to be mentioned, well, let's just watch for ourselves, shall we? Will the Prime Minister finally put an end to this costly, self-licking ice cream cone and stop sending the bill to Canadians? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the only Canadians we're asking to pay a little more are those uh, who've been very successful in these past years and are able to make more than $250,000 in profit from selling off investments. These are things uh, that we think we can be asking of Canadians who've been successful to support Canadians who need a little more help, whether it's with the most ambitious housing plan this country's ever seen, whether it's dental care that's already delivered supports in just eight weeks to 200,000 seniors, or whether it's more spaces in childcare. But the Conservatives continue to protect the wealthiest instead of supporting Canadians. Trudeau was usually good at thinking on his feet, but when he starts mispronouncing words and lapsing into his uh, uh, uh fits, you know he's getting flustered. But why would he be getting flustered now? Question period is almost over, which means Trudeau can spend the next three months looking at himself in a mirror and listening to recordings of his speeches. Could it be he's on edge because he's waiting for what Polyev is about to serve up next? By the way, pay close attention to Michelle Ferrari's face in the background. You can tell she had been waiting for this moment the entire question period, and the look of satisfaction on her face says it all. Things are about to get rowdy. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. That's a little bit rich coming from him as he raises taxes on single moms for the crime of driving to the grocery store while he treats himself to a jet-setting experience where the food on the plane out of a six-day trip was $220,000 beef brisket, parsley potatoes with truffle oil, beef tenderloin with port wine sauce, braised lamb shanks, and even cheese case cake with pistachio brittle. Mr. Speaker, with Canadians lined up at the food bank, what's on the menu for this Prime Minister this summer? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives continue to use cheap attacks and slogans uh, when they stand against support directly for Canadians. The Right Honourable Prime Minister from the top, please. Now, if you thought that heckling was something, just you wait. It gets infinitely rowdier from there. Be sure to watch the faces on the Liberals very closely. You can tell they were anticipating this moment, and now that Trudeau has been cornered with the question, after having already endured an hour of attacks, you can see they're wondering if he can talk the Liberals out of this scandal. Speaker, the Conservative leader continues to use cheap attacks and slogans uh, while he tries to hide from the fact that he is standing with the wealthiest Canadians and against the idea of them paying a little more so that Canadians, can, young Canadians can buy a home, so that seniors can get their teeth fixed, so that young families can find a place in childcare. These are the investments we're making that they are standing against, Mr. Speaker. We will continue to deliver for Canadians who need them while he chooses to protect the interests of his wealthy friends. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, there's nothing cheap about the $220,000 that he spent on one trip for food alone. Looks like Lord Justin's word salad didn't bolster the confidence of his caucus as they're now trying to silence Pierre with some heckling when he repeats the question. 
The Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition uh, asked this question. I ask all members to please keep their voices down. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition from, from the top. There's nothing cheap, Mr. Speaker, about the Prime Minister spending $220,000 for food alone on a six-day jet-setting tour for himself. All the while, homelessness up 38 percent. Toronto has 256 homeless encampments, where one in ten people in that city are now eating at food banks. They join two million Canadians. The good news is life was not like this before this Prime Minister, and it won't be like this after he's gone. Can we not have a carbon tax election now to choose a government that will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime? It smells like the cup. The, the right honorable prime minister. Remember when I told you you hadn't seen the rowdy yet? Well, here it comes. Mr. Speaker, once again, we see the extent of... Really not sure what triggered that, but you can see that while chanting, the conservatives all turned backwards and looked up, leading us to believe a visitor had said something they clearly approved of. If you listen carefully, you'll also hear one of the conservatives shout to the liberals that they're over 20 points behind. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the conservatives over this past session have stood in this house to stand against dental care for seniors. They have stood in this house to stand against expanding child care investments in spaces. They have stood in this house to stand against the kinds of investments that are helping Canadians uh, with diabetes, uh, Canadians afford uh, birth control. These are the choices that they are making. Now, they're filled with slogans and bumper stickers that don't solve problems but amplify anger while we are focused Focus on supporting Canadians. Canadians can make their choice about the kind of country they want to live in. And that's how the session of Parliament came to an end with another patented Trudeau word salad that completely dodges the question that was asked of him. Well, no matter. We all knew that would be the outcome of Polyev asking the question, and the Conservatives were ready for it, and they're now already leveraging Trudeau's response to remind voters just how dismissive and out of touch he is. So how do you feel about the Conservatives' performance in this final question period? Did he do a stellar job, or do you feel that there's room for improvement? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and please do consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.